How you doing, Steve Noble? Out here in my hot and humid garage. Uh, we're going to do today is we're going to, I just put a new rear tire on here. Uh, so we're going to line the rear wheel and then we're going to set the belt tension. Also going to set it so the belt tracks true. Uh, basically align the rear belt. This is basically the same procedure minus a few details for all Harleys and it works for chains too. So mm, works for most, you know, open drive line belts, um, open drive line motorcycles. So let's get to it. All right, we're over here on the left side of the bike. I uh, got these little rubber caps here on our adjuster screws. Uh, and you have your big nut here. This actually locks your axle down. Uh, they have these little adjuster, this little nut and screw here, and this is what you use on each side to align it with. So these are already loose because um, I had the rear wheel off because uh, I put a new tire on, but just for demonstration purposes. All you really got to do is back these off, maybe half a turn or so, maybe a full turn. Uh, do that on both sides. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of digital calipers uh, and we're going to measure the length from the end of this to the very end here uh, and then we're going to make that setting the same on both sides so and of course over here on the right side up close and personal look at our super trap exhaust uh, pull the cap off of this one take that one back off about full turn or so half turn full turn somewhere in that room back over here on the left side and we're going to adjust Loosen this nut, axle nut up. It's already kind of loose. So we're just going to take it in there until it's finger tight. Just kind of keep it in place for right now. Um, and this thing's already loose. I'm going to give the back tire a swat here a little bit. Oh, and I do have the bike up in the air already. Uh, so the rear wheel is off the ground. Uh, I just have a little bottle jack right there on the front of the swing arm. You use the uh, bottle jack, like car scissor jack, uh, or whatever works for you. Um, All right, so we're over here, back over here on the right side of the bike. If you can see up here, you can see how loose this belt is right here because I have the thing backed way off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that half inch wrench on either side here, and we're gonna run these bolts in even, run these nuts in right here evenly. So there's about three quarters, three turns of one quarter each. And do that on both sides. We're going to keep running that in until this belt gets at least a moderate amount of tension on there. It shouldn't take too much. Try to go the same amount of turns on each side. We'll spin a little bit. Make sure she's... See it in there. A little bit more. That's looking pretty good. Three. All right, so when you align the tire, you also have to set the belt tension uh, as you do it. Now, of course, Harley has a, there's a little window here that you can see, and then Harley has a little gauge, something about 10 pounds of deflection versus, you know, half inch or five eighths or something like that, with deflection in the window, and blah, 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 blah. Here's how to do it without the Harley special tool. Grab the belt with your fingertips, somewhere near the center of the, you know the two pulleys you shouldn't be able to twist it more than 45 degrees with your fingertips if you can easily twist it past like i still can a little bit on this one yeah it needs to be a little tighter then but you shouldn't be able to go more than 45 degrees twist either way but since we got to do a little alignment we're going to leave it a tad bit loose and then we're going to sneak up on it as we do the final alignment here in the back because that's pretty close right there so around the back of the bike three all right, one of the tools I have here is a cheap pair of digital calipers here. Um, and what these do is they measure the thickness of things. Uh, if you don't have some, get some. If you're going to work on stuff, you're going to need them. The cheapo ones from Harbor Freight and all that, for as precision as you're doing, it'll work fine. If you're doing motor building, buy better ones. But anyways, what you're going to do is you take them, they basically they measure the gap in there. And that's just that wrench is randomly 0.177 of an inch. Or they have this little extender rod here on the back, and as this slides out... That reads the depth right there on the screen, or you can do an inside dimension here. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to go up here on the screw here, and we're going to go, hopefully you can see all this, we're going to go from the end of this adjuster bolt here, you can see the little rod, slide up there, we can see a little better, then that into the head of the bolt. And then, from there, you can turn, boop, 0.615. 
now we're gonna go around the other side. All right, this side, you can see that. Hopefully it won't glare too much. There we go. So, we're gonna take the end right here, then we'll slide the calipers apart. You'll see the little rod come out, and it hits the head of the nut. And that is upside down, but it says 0 0.712. So, this bolt is longer than the other bolt. So, I need to, these need to be this about the same length, within a few thousandths of an inch. So, this is 712, the other one was uh, 640 or whatever. We're going to adjust the other one, uh, and we're going to turn that nut in, and that's going to make the bolt come out on the other side, until we get to 710, and that's also going to tighten up the belt as we do it, because, whoop, can't move here where you can see a little bear because it's actually moving the axle backwards it's moving the axle this way as we tighten this nut up because this bolt here is pulling on this axle backwards so let's see if I can do this without a terrible glare on everything pause it all All right, so we're over here on this, over so back over on the right side. So we gotta get this to go 710. Like I said, when you tighten this nut up, it's going to pull this bolt out, and this bolt is actually an eye bolt that is around the rear axle. And that's actually going to pull this axle backwards, away from the pulley, away from the front pulley. Uh, it's gonna pull the whole wheel backwards. So not only will that make this extender bolt even with the other side, but it's also gonna tighten up that belt that lasts a little bit. So, you probably cannot see this entire thing in one shot, but. We're going to go two quarter turns, two one quarter turns, and we're going to measure this with our calipers. That's 640. We're going for 712, so we're going to go one, two, three more. I can feel the belt getting tighter as I tension this. That is. There we go. Let's see if we can't some of the glare off of there. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. We're going for 712, so we're going to go one more, see where we're at. Seven ninety. Now the other side was out too far, we have to back it off and then push the tire in, but luckily 797. Check our belt tension. Man. 723. So that's 10 thousandths over. Let's check our belt tension. Holy fuck. That's too tight. Alright, so we're going to check our belt tension. That is hard to get to 45 degrees. So we actually went too far, so the belt's too tight. So, so we went too far. So we were at 712, so we're gonna, and then 740 or something was too loose. So we're gonna split the difference, and we'll call it 660. And we will slide that. So we're gonna back this off. Now this thing might spring back in, might not. We're going to measure this distance again here. Slide that there. That is 672. You can see that. Oh, it was. 670. 670. Call it right. 670 right there. So um, I'm going to check my belt tension. Belt tension is still a tad bit tight. Uh, worst comes to worst, I would have to tap on this with a mallet right here. You can see my fingertip. 
I would tap on this with a mallet on each side to drive the axle back in a little bit, but luckily it's moving back in, so we're going to go. That's 646, 650, 648, 649, hopefully you can see that. And that's pretty good on that side. So, go over the other side. Actually, you know what? Just to make sure it's seated, I don't have a rubber mallet on hand, so I'm going to sacrifice my screwdriver head and give it a little... Just to make sure it's all seated back in there. Now the nut should still be at the same place. Check my belt tension. Belt tension's good. So, alright, so we're back over here on the right side. So, or I'm sorry, the left side. So, I'm going to put the head of the bolt, uh, head of my Crapsman screwdriver here and just make sure the axle seat all the way back up in there. And we're going to once again take our half inch wrench that we misplaced. But first, we're going to measure it. So we're going to measure this side. We were at 670 on the other side. Back this out here a little bit. See if we can get everything in the shot. All right, so. All right, back here on the left side, make sure the axle's seated. We're going to take a craftsman, craftsman screwdriver here, and we're going to, is a little soft face. And we're going to take a ball bead hammer, because I don't have my mallet here. Tap in there, make sure the axle's seated all the way in there. And you're going to have to read this upside down, because just the way it is. All right, so we're at 704 right there. We want to go back to like 670, the other side was at, so... And since the belt is not pulling on this side, I'm going to keep doing this to make sure the axle is seated there. Now, tapping it back won't actually change the measurement, but it does make sure everything's in place. So, uh, sign of the devil there. Woo! 666 thousandths. That's within four thousandths. We are going to call that good. And then uh, I'm going to take my big old nut here. And I'm going to tighten it down. Well, first, I'm going to reach across here. Check my belt tension. Once again, 45 degrees, the tips of the fingers. And then we're going to take our big old wrench here, which, uh, and we're going to snug this back up. Now I'm going to give this a pretty good pull here. Make sure it's tight. And we're going to pause that. So cut that. All right, so over on the right side, I'm actually holding the axle in place of the nut over the wrench ahead of it. I'm going to give this a pretty good pull, tighten it down to manufacturer's specifications. You don't need to kill it, but it needs to be pretty tight. For the size of the wrench you're using, a pretty good oomph will get you there. I'm going to spin the back wheel here. Everything looks good. Come over here to this side. See if we can't sit you up here. Feld is tracking pretty good in there. You want to make sure it's never hard to one side or the other. It'll move back and forth, and you'll have to ride it to where it really seats in. But you want to make sure it's not climbing out. And just to be on the safe side, we're going to take our calipers again on the left side of the bike. We're at 663. Now we torqued it all down. And here on this side, measuring the same location, we are at 652. Oh shit, we're off by 20 thousandths. Well, guess what? We're going to break this free and we'll reshoot that. Alright. And our final adjustments there. I had to go back and redo it, so I'm reshooting this. So there, um, goes out to 657. Come over this side. Measure this. You can see there or not. 
that comes out to 665 or I'm sorry 656 I'm reading it upside down so we're within nine thousandths of an inch so we're gonna call that good give it a good spin here make sure our belt tracks a little straight sorry for the shaky camera there belt on the back track straight there we go reach up front here check our belt tension again 45 degrees everything looks good so we're going to pull the axle bolts down again back over here on this side all right the belt tension's good we'll take our big old wrench here big old wrench on this side tighten her down remember you got a pretty big long wrench here so you got a lot of leverage so tighten her down to manufacturer's specifications change the floor. Everything should be good from there. We'll check it one more time. Uh, there we are. 659, if you can see that. Other side is... ...647. So once again, we're within a few thousandths there. And uh, we're gonna call that good. Last step. Take the E-clip here, snap it back on there, take your little rubber boots here, put them back on, you're ready to rock and roll. Take it off the thing, go for a ride. Make sure it tracks straight, make sure it's not trying to climb out either side here. Whoop, climb out either side here, make sure it tracks nice and straight. That's all I got.